namin Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagagampanan na huwag maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasala. Amen. Good morning, dear learners. Welcome to our new episode of Virtual Learning Engagement. How are you so far? I hope you're all safe and doing well in these trying times. Are you ready for today's learning engagement? That's nice. I'm so pleased to hear that you are ready. I am so excited because I have a lot of information to share with you today. Make sure you have your English learning pocket, notebook, and pen with you to take down notes. You may also ask questions after the discussion and I would willingly address them later in the question and answer portion. But please make sure that your questions are related and relevant to the topic. Lastly, remember to always be respectful and polite. Let us kickstart this day with a game. Are you ready? We will be playing Four Picks One Word. Are you familiar with it? Well, Four Picks One Word is very simple. In this game, each level displays four pictures linked by one word. Your goal is to work out what the word is from a set of jumbled letters given below the pictures. But we will add a twist on this game. You have seconds to post the answer in the comment section. Are you ready? Come on, let's go! Level 1 What is the answer in this part? The answer is research. Great job. Let's go to level two. What do you think is the answer in this part? The answer is arranged. Fabulous. Let's go to level three. What do you think is the answer in this part? The answer is connected. Very good. Let's go to the last level. What do you think is the answer in level 4? The answer is... Language! Magnificent! Well, the correct answers are the following. First is research. Second is arranged. Third is connected. And the last answer is language. You might be guessing what will be your topic for today. Do you have any ideas so far? You're right. Today, we will be talking about the alternative delivery mode entitled, Your Face Sounds Familiar, Awareness of Proper Terms to Amplify the Passion of Writing, prepared by Mr. Philip Carl S. Season from Big Nine National High School. Let me first present to you our most essential learning competency, that is... Observe the language of research, campaigns, and advocacies. We will be also aiming to meet the following specific objectives. These are 
expand ideas using principles of cohesion and coherence, get familiar with the technical terms used in research, and use appropriate language when delivering campaign speeches. Before we dig deeper in our lesson, let us first have a review. Last time, we discussed the different writing techniques. Aside from being able to write properly, one must also learn that there are different techniques employed in different types of writing. These techniques, when properly utilized, will make one an effective writer. First is informative or expository. An informative text aims to provide information to the readers, while an expository text aims to explain a subject matter. The content of informative writing should be verifiable, factual, and explanatory in nature. Some examples of informative writing include recipes, instruction booklets, and academic books. Next is persuasive writing. From the name itself, it aims to persuade. This type of writing is intended to persuade or convince the readers to believe in or do some of time. This is any account of a series, whether non-fictional or fictional. Narratives can be presented through a sequence of written or spoken words, still or moving images, or any combination of these. Examples are short stories and personal essays. To sum up, writing is an essential skill that all of us need to learn and develop. Effective writing skills contribute to effective communication. Hmm, I'm wondering, do you believe writing is useful to our society? Why do you think so? Well, your answers are all correct. Writing is beneficial for our society. For that reason, we can write a research report. But what does this term mean? Research report. A research report is a document that accounts for the problems, methods, and results of a conducted study. It aims to provide solutions or recommendations to solve or address a defined problem in a relevant subject area. Now, what is the importance of a research report? Well, writing a research report on a social issue could mean researching about an issue that concerns and influences many people. Writing a research paper, we can also understand the impacts of social problems on individual, group, organizational, and societal levels. Now that we know the relevance of writing a research report, let us now study the different parts of it. Our research report is divided into two parts. These are preliminaries and major parts. For preliminaries, we have title page, abstract, table of contents, list of tables and figures. Let us first talk about the title page. The title page contains the title of the work. Let us see the other details that we should indicate in the title page. First, we have the name of the author. Next is the affiliation, which is your school. Then the course or the subject that you are taking. Your teacher's name and the due date of submission. Let us now move forward to abstract. Abstract gives a summary of the report and is usually limited from 150 to 250 words. It contains the background of the study, the problems, the results, and the recommendations. Let us see the example. Books have synopsis which gives a brief summary on what the book is all about. Research paper has its own version of summary called abstract. When you're looking for a research, whether in a library or online, the first thing that you need to read is the abstract. Again, the abstract contains the main information in a research, such as the research problems, background, and the results and recommendations. We also have the table of contents. Table of contents lists sections, headings, and their pages. Just like books, a research paper also has table of contents. Here's an example of it. Next is list of tables and figures. 
it organizes the titles and pages of the tables and figures and helps one easily to locate each. In a research paper, the researcher will use several illustrations and tables to demonstrate data. Here's an example of it. A list of these can help the readers to easily navigate through the research paper. Now that we have discussed the preliminary parts of a research report, let us now move forward to the major parts of it. The major parts of research report are the following. Introduction, review of related literature, research methodology, presentation of data, and lastly, conclusion and recommendation. Let us first talk about the introduction. The introduction part explains the purpose of the study and contains the research problems. In writing the introduction, carefully provide background information about the topic. Here's an example of an introduction. The introduction serves multiple purposes. It presents the background to your study, introduces your topic and aims, and gives an overview of the paper. A good introduction will provide a solid foundation and encourage readers to continue on to the main parts of your paper, which are the methods, results, and discussion. Here's an example of an introduction. Next is the review of the related studies and literature. The review of related studies and literature contains information from studies or documents related to the topic. The section presents findings of previous researches and identifies where one's research begins. Here's an example of review of related literature. In review of related literature, you talk about knowledge and findings from existing literature and relevant to your topic. If you find gaps or conflicts in existing literature, you can also discuss these in your review and, if applicable, how you plan to address these gaps or resolve these conflicts through your study. To undertake an RRL, therefore, you first need to identify relevant literature. You can do these through various resources online and offline. Ensure you are saving all applicable resources because you will need to mention them in your paper. When going through resources, make notes and identify key concepts of each resource to describe in the review. Next is research methodology. The research methodology identifies the method one is pursuing in his or her research. It enumerates the data gathering procedure, which is the intended procedure or steps in gathering the data, and the materials or research instruments such as survey, interview, and observation. Depending on the nature of the study, the researcher may utilize one or more instrument in his or her study. Let me show you an example of a research methodology. Next is presentation of data. The presentation of data highlights the results of the data gathering procedure. It usually includes results of the used research instruments that are transformed in numerical data, such as tables, graphs, and figures. Presenting data involves the use of a variety of different graphical techniques to visually show the reader the relationship between different data sets to emphasize the nature of a particular aspect of the data. Here's an example of a presentation of data. Lastly is conclusion recommendation. The conclusion and recommendation presents discussion about the data. In this part, the researcher writes his or her own realizations based on the results that he or she has gathered. It usually answers the research problems in light of the research performed and the interpreted data. Conclusions interpret the findings or results of an investigation. Recommendation follows conclusions and our opinions supported by the report's findings. Recommendations will always be based on conclusions. Here is an example of conclusion and recommendation. Every writer wishes to make their points clearly to their readers. With pieces of writing that are easy 
to read and have logical links between the various points made. Let us read this paragraph. Learning to write is never an easy thing. A budding writer has to learn that writing is a thing for patient people, that writing usually takes time. Other things that concern a promising writer are just secondary things. Being able to catch the interest of people, being able to master all the grammatical rules, being able to provide a pleasant experience for his or her readers, do not make a promising writer any better, a writer who is the most patient. Do you think the ideas are connected with each other? Hmm, this paragraph needs to be fixed. Why not try to arrange the paragraph? You have 30 seconds to do it. Your timer starts now. Let's see if your answers are correct. Learning to write is never an easy thing. Essentially, for a budding writer, has to learn that writing is a thing for patient people, that writing usually takes time. On the contrary, other things that concern a promising writer are just secondary things. For instance, being able to catch the interest of people, being able to master all the grammar rules, being able to provide a pleasant experience for his or her own readers, in fact, do not make a promising writer any better than a writer who is the most patient. Wow, your answers are right. Now, to improve your writing skills, let's talk about cohesion and coherence. Cohesion and coherence are products of one another. The primary goal of cohesion and coherence is to achieve well-arranged ideas in a paragraph. Let us first talk about coherence. Coherence is achieved when the ideas in a paragraph are arranged logically. The following are the classifications of logical orders. First is the order of importance. Next is chronological order. Then we have the spatial order. We also have comparison and contrast order. Lastly is the cause and effect. First is the order of importance. This order is classified into two, descending order and ascending order. In the descending order, one lists the most important ideas or the major ideas first followed by minor ideas. Ascending order, on the other hand, leaves the minor ideas first, followed by a major or most important ideas. Example, Glenn de Almo is more fortunate than the motherless, fatherless little child scavenging for food and streets. She has a father, a warm house, and a friend, her grandmother. She is very old and not strong but she loves Glenda and takes care of her. Glenda's father is too busy to pay much attention to her, but her grandmother is always there for her. This paragraph is arranged in order of importance. Highlighted in yellow is the major idea or the topic in the paragraph, while the rest serves as minor ideas that supports or adds information about the major idea. With that order, we therefore conclude that this paragraph is arranged in descending order. Next is chronological order. Here, ideas are arranged based on a time element. Let's see the example. Paper mache sculpture can be made from a few items. First, cut newspaper into one or two inch strips. Then, Dip the paper into a mixture of water and white paste. Finally, mold the strips over a box, a hanger, or plump newspaper. The shape you create will soon harden. 
Have you noticed how every step is connected with each other? Notice the underlined words. We have first, then, and finally. Those are called transitional devices. Transitional devices such as first, then, and finally are used in this paragraph to indicate sequence. Chronological order shows items, events, or even ideas that are arranged in the order in which they occur or should occur. Next is spatial order. Here, ideas are arranged based on the description of places and objects. Let's look at the example. Setting foot in a city hall is like entering a mansion. Outside, glass windows, cleanly painted walls, and modern structures will greet you like a visitor. But once inside the majestic doors, you are met by clicking typewriters and beeping computers. While reading this paragraph, what picture comes into your mind? Is it the Valenzuela City Hall? Well, we are thinking the same. That is how the spatial order of arrangement of idea works. It shows an arranged or organized ideas in which details are presented as they are located in space. From left to right, top to bottom, etc. Spatial order describes things as they appear when observed. Next is comparison and contrast order. It shows ideas based on similarities and differences. Let's take a look at this example. Before the advent of computers and modern technology, People communicating over long distances use traditional means such as letters and telephones. Nowadays, we have a vast array of communication tools which can complete this task, ranging from email to instant messaging and video calls. While the present and previous means of communication are similar in their general form, they differ in regard to their speed and the range of tools available. For us to see the similarities and differences of technology before and now, let us take a look at this Venn diagram. Technology before includes letters and telephones. Also, it takes a long time for messages and information to be received. Let us now look at the improvements of technology. Unlike the technology before, we can now use email, instant messaging, and video calls to relay message and information faster and more convenient than before. The only similarity between the two is that both still employs the same manner of communication. We can still send messages and talk to our loved ones. Lastly is the cost and effect. Here, ideas are arranged based on the causal relationship. Let's have the example. Letting alcohol take control over your life has many negative effects on a person and the people around them. One important effect is the damage you can do to your body. Drinking can lead to severe illness and even eventual death. Some health consequences to consider might be liver disease, kidney failure, and for pregnant women, the loss of their unborn child. Another detriment is that an addiction could lead to drinking and driving possibly causing a fatal car accident for either yourself and or an innocent bystander. Let's take a look at the highlighted parts of the paragraph. Highlighted in yellow is the cause. The cause is letting alcohol take over your life. So, what would be the effects of letting alcohol take over your life? The effects are highlighted in blue. The effects are the following. It leads to severe illness and even eventual death. Illnesses include liver disease, kidney failure, and the loss of unborn child for pregnant women. An addiction could lead to drinking and driving, possibly causing a fatal car accident for either yourself and or an innocent bystander. Logical division of ideas simply means that ideas are grouped together and each group is discussed accordingly. Knowing how to arrange these ideas makes our work smoothly connected to each other. All readers appreciate a logical order of thoughts. For that reason, we should use different transitional devices to connect sentences. With the use of transitional devices, we achieve cohesion. 
Since we discussed about the research report a while ago, let us now talk about the transitional devices that we can use in writing a research report. There are various classifications of transitional devices. These are addition, cause and effect, comparison, contrast, conclusion, example, and restatement. For addition, we can use also and in addition, besides, furthermore, and moreover. Example. In addition to the database, researchers, funders, and institutions should explore ways that intellectual property could be shared through other agreements that would make it simpler for researchers and companies to know what royalty costs they might expect. Next is cost and effect. We can use, therefore, so and as a result. Example, due to budgetary demands, funding will be cut in half. As a result, many employees will be terminated from their job. Next is comparison. We can use similarly, likewise, and in the same way. Example, it was not possible to establish a correlation between these variables. Similarly, the connection between X and Y remains unclear. Next is contrast. We can use however, but, and on the other hand. Example, on the one hand, grouping students' viability allows the students to absorb material at their own pace. On the other hand, mixing students of all abilities has been shown to boost students' performance. Next is conclusion. We can use to conclude, to summarize, and on the whole. Example, to conclude, the results of this study showed that there is no significant relationship between the learners' intercultural sensitivity and their academic performance. Next is example. We can use, for instance, for example, and to illustrate. Example, to illustrate the results of the study, the researchers will show the collected data through tables and graphs. Restatement. We can use in other words, that is, and in simpler terms. Example. The results show that interculturally sensitive individuals are motivated to communicate in intercultural situations. In other words, intercultural sensitivity is a factor of successful intercultural communication. We just learned how to write effectively with cohesion and coherence. Now, let us enhance our speaking skills. To enhance it, we have to take note of the effective use of language, considering the degree to which the language is appropriate, vivid, inclusive, and familiar. Now, we will define each of these aspects of language and discuss why it is important in public speaking. When considering how to use language effectively in your speech, consider the degree in which language is appropriate, vivid, inclusive, and familiar. Use appropriate language. As with anything in life, there are positive and negative ways of using language. One of the first concepts a speaker needs to think about when looking at language use is appropriateness. By appropriate, we mean whether the language is suitable or fitting for ourselves as the speaker, our audience, the speaking context, and the speech itself. One of the first questions to ask yourself is whether the language you plan on using in a speech fits your own speaking pattern. Not all language choices are appropriate for all speakers. The language you select should be suitable for you and not for someone else. For example, you will be joining a spoken poetry competition. You are more comfortable in using Filipino rather than English. You find that you can express yourself more in using Filipino. If you find it more suitable and convenient for you, then use Filipino. Next is appropriate for the audience. The second aspect of appropriateness asks whether the language you're choosing is appropriate for your specific audience. 
let's say you were an engineering student. If you are giving a presentation in an engineering class, you can use language or jargon. And when we say jargon, technical words and phrases common to a specific profession or discipline. So if you're an engineering student, use vocabulary or language that engineering students will know and understand. On the other hand, if you use engineering vocabulary in a public speaking class, many audience will not understand you. Next is appropriate for the context. The next question about appropriateness is whether the language you will use is suitable or fitting for the context itself. The language you may use or employ if you're addressing a student assembly in high school auditorium will differ from the language you would use at the business meeting in a hotel ballroom. In other words, let us consider the situation and choose our language appropriate to it. Lastly, is appropriate for the topic. The fourth and final question about appropriateness of language involves whether the language is appropriate for your specific topic. If your speech is about the dual resonance model of string theory, it makes sense to expect that you will use more advanced and sophisticated language in physics than if your topic was a basic introduction to the physics of, say, sound or light waves. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? This is a quiz competition where you have to correctly answer a series of multiple choice questions in order to advance to the next level question. There are 15 questions in total and each question is worth a specific amount of money and no time limit is placed on you to come up with an answer. You also get three lifelines to assist you if you get stuck on a particular question. Are you ready? Let's play! Who wants to be a millionaire? Here's your first question for $500. Which of the following parts of research report is not included in the preliminary section? A. Title page B. Table of contents C. Abstract or D. Review of related literature And the correct answer is letter D, review of related literature. Congratulations, you just won $500. Here's your second question for $1,000. What part of research report contains the background of the study, the problems, the results, and recommendations? A review of related literature b introduction c abstract or d presentation of data and the correct answer is letter c abstract congratulations you now have one thousand dollars here's the next question for two thousand dollars The section presents the findings of previous researches and identifies where one's research begins. What section of a research report is it? A. Abstract B. Research Methodology C. Review of Related Literature or D. Conclusion and Recommendation And the correct answer is Letter C, Review of Related Literature. Congratulations, you now have $2,000. Here's the next question for $3,000. It answers the research problems in light of the research performed and the interpreted data. A, Research Methodology. B, Conclusion and Recommendation. C. Presentation of data or D. Review of related literature And the correct answer is 
Letter B, conclusion and recommendation. Congratulations, you now have $3,000. Here's the next question for $10,000. Complete this sentence. Over the years, blank to my research, I have engaged in many different training activities for younger scientists, both within and outside my institution. Is it A, in other words, B, likewise, C, in addition, or D, N? And the correct answer is letter C, in addition. Congratulations, you now have $10,000. Here's the next question for $30,000. Tina is speaking English in a Filipino class. What aspect of appropriate language use is being deviated? Is it A, appropriate to the speaker? B, appropriate to the context? C, appropriate to the audience? Or D, appropriate to the topic? And the correct answer is letter B, appropriate to the context. Congratulations, you now have $30,000. Here's the next question for $50,000. Dr. Smith is an Australian physician vlogger who prefers to speak in Filipino to be understood by Filipino netizens. Which aspect of appropriate language use is being utilized? Is it A, appropriate to the context, B, appropriate to the topic, C, appropriate to the audience, or D, appropriate to the speaker? And the answer is... Letter C, appropriate to the audience. Congratulations, you now have $50,000. Do you have what it takes to be the next millionaire? Then see you next time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Now, if you have any questions or clarifications regarding the lesson, you can type them in the comment section. A minute will be given to you to post your questions and our teacher moderator will gather them. The timer starts now. Time's up. Thank you to our teacher moderator who gathered the questions. I will now answer some of your questions. First question is from Jendi De Leon National High School. What is the implication of research in our daily lives? Well, what would the modern world would look like without research? Without research, there's no way you would possibly be watching this right now and for me doing this live stream as the internet was created and developed by doing extensive research. Also, with that research, we would still be likely hunting for food. This just means that aside from research as a tool for building crucial knowledge, it also increases the quality of our lives. Second question is from my son, National High School. In what ways can we improve our writing skills as we prepare to conduct our own research someday? Aside from taking note of cohesion and coherence, to improve your research writing skills, you should write like it is your job, which means to practice your writing skills. 
Writing on a regular basis will not only alleviate your fear of the blank page, it will also help you to develop your own unique style. So, even if nobody reads it, keep on writing. Remember, practice makes perfect. Also, do not forget that the best writers are also keen readers, and reading on a regular basis is an easy way to start developing your writing skills. If you want to practice your research writing skills, then it's better to start reading research materials right now. Question number three is from our Kongbato National High School. How can we use language effectively both in writing and speaking? To write and to speak effectively, do not only consider what to say but how to say it. To communicate effectively, it is not enough to just have well-organized ideas expressed in complete sentences that are coherent paragraphs. Analyzing your audience and purpose is the key to effective writing and speaking. So, choose the most reliable language. Think about the objective and goal associated with the context by considering the audience or the reader. You have been so awesome today! For the questions which may not have been addressed today, they will be addressed and discussed by your subject teachers during your follow-up discussions. Let us practice what you have learned today by answering the tasks and activities from your learning pocket. You're going to answer the following for practice. These are activities one, two, and three. What's more, activities one and two? And what I can do, activities one and two. Lastly, to evaluate your mastery of the lesson, answer the assessment. Many thanks to our tech team and teacher moderator who made this learning engagement possible. And thank you for attending today, learners. Have a good day, everyone.